When you visit both Israeli and Palestinian territories, you will notice many differences, such as culture, religion, food, language, and cityscapes. But one thing all tourists immediately notice is the huge difference in prices. In this video, I'm gonna compare how much I spent on a variety of items during my travels in Israel and Palestine. Let's get started. First, let's have a look at transportation. Israel has multiple international airports, so it's easy to access major cities. On the other hand, there are no airports in the Palestinian territory. In order to reach the West Bank, which is usually open to foreign tourists, you have to cross the border on land from Israel or Jordan. In Israel, railways are useful for moving between major cities. They are fast, comfortable, and punctual for the most part. Palestine doesn't have a train, so you will need to use a bus or shared van in order to move from city to city. Sometimes, a bus stop is just a roadside without any sign. So you may need to ask locals to help you find them. But that's one of the fun parts of traveling. By the way, I converted all the prices to dollars in this video. But actually, shekels are used as local currencies in both Israel and Palestine. I visited Israel and Palestine in September and October, and it was still very hot during the daytime, so I bought a lot of water bottles to stay hydrated. So I just got this water bottle at a shop, and the staff told me it cost uh, 13 shekel, but after that I went to another shop that was only like 20 meters away, and the water was only six shekel there. Like half the price. Was that ripped off? Hey. How much is this water? Two shekel. Two? Two shekel. Okay. This water bottle was only two shekel. While many local foods are different between Israel and Palestine for cultural and religious reasons, there are some similarities as well. For example, shawarma is one of the most popular foods in both regions. Many other Middle Eastern foods are also loved by both people, such as hummus. Hummus is a creamy thick spread made primarily from mashed chickpeas and a few other healthy ingredients. Hello! What he just gave me is a falafel, which is a deep fried ball made from chickpeas. 
In particular, the city of Bethlehem is known as the best place to eat falafel in Palestine, and it was the best thing I ate during the Palestine trip, except for kunafe. Kunafe is a pastry that is layered or filled with white goat cheese, soaked in a sugar syrup flavored with rose water, and topped with ground nuts such as pistachios. The city of Nablus is called Palestine's capital of sweet treats, and the kunafe is excellent there. Thank you. On the other hand, Israel offers not only Middle Eastern foods, but also a great variety of international cuisines. I found some Japanese restaurants and other Asian ones too, which were very helpful when I was craving for a familiar taste during my trip. Sometimes you can see the religious differences through food. For instance, Hamburger shops are common in both Israel and Palestine, but mixtures of milk and meat are forbidden in Judaism, so it's hard to find cheeseburgers in Israel. Islam has other rules for food too, but typically, cheeseburgers wouldn't be a problem in Palestine. Let's take a look at some items other than food as well. These regions have such strong sunshine, so sunscreen is essential during a trip. If you travel continuously for a week or longer, you will also have to wash your clothes at some point. And most importantly, you will need a place to sleep. When I stayed at one of the cheapest hostels in West Jerusalem, it cost me about $20 per night. In Palestine, accommodations are generally a little cheaper, and this cozy hostel in Bethlehem was less than $14. The only exception I found in Palestine was the World of Hotel in Bethlehem, which is designed by anonymous London-based artist, Banksy. Its cheapest option, the dormitory room, still costs $70 per night. Well, but considering you can sleep surrounded by the world-renowned artist's work, I think it's a decent price. If you want to know more about this hotel, please check out my Bethlehem video. These are some price comparisons between Israel and Palestine. As you can see, Palestine is more affordable overall, but you can't just rejoice at it because it also reflects a huge disparity in people's incomes. But still, it's a great advantage for foreign tourists so I just hope more people visit not only Israel but also the Palestinian territory. The West Bank is usually open to tourists, and apart from being cheap, this land has so many great things to offer, such as its great history, unique culture, and warm hospitality.
I think I will make this the last video of my Palestine trip series behind the wall. But if you like some more Palestine travel tips or have any questions, please leave a comment and I might make a video about it sometime. From next week, I will start sharing my new journey with you in another country. Do you want to know where I go next? Take a look! Let's work!